Hello, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. So, carrying on with criminal law. So, I'm going to um, just run through some offences and take you through the process you, you need to go through in order to analyse um, a, a offence against a person and then categorise it correctly. So, first of all, take the victim. How serious is the injury? You know, are we looking at assault and battery level? right up to, to uh, grievous bodily harm, possibly uh, attempted murder. And then bear in mind, what was the, the state of mind of the, of the defendant? Was he or she doing this deliberately or recklessly, or, or did, did they have any justifiable um, defence? So there are other questions to ask. Um, are there any um, issues uh, in relation to actus reus or mens rea? Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and th that obviously touches on the defences you could run, like, you know, justification, self-defence being the main one. Um, OK, so uh, actual bodily harm and battery are quite close. It's quite difficult to tell them apart. But remember in R against Miller, any hurt which was intended to um, uh, injure the person's health or to reduce their comfort um, could, could count um, as, uh, as, as assault. And it's, it's not something which is very temporary or, or so minor that we wouldn't uh, think that it's, it's, it's a crime at all. Um, just accidentally bumping into someone in the street, something like that, is, 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 I mean, is not an assault. Or if there's some sort of physical contact as part of a proper sport and, and done within the rules. Again, that's not assault. Was there consent? Not, um, uh, volens non fit in urea. Um, so as in, if they're willing to participate in this activity and they got injured, in, in which case there was no criminous wrongdoing on the part of the defendant. So, um, but did the defendant uh, um, interfere with the person's health? Um, and is this, is this injuring the person? And remember, the very transient things are usually not held to be uh, assaults. But um, how transient does it have to be? Something which casts, which 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 causes you harm or discomfort for a, a second, a minute, an hour, a day, or what? It's imponderable. Um, okay, so um, serious harm that's covered by Section Twenty of the Offence Against the Person Act, or indeed Section Eighteen. So um, if someone intended to cause grievous bodily harm, you'd look at Section Eighteen in in particular. Remember this doctrine of transferred malice. If I'm trying to hit Andrew but I accidentally hit Ben uh, whilst aiming at Andrew, then I can say, but I didn't intend to hit uh, Ben, I was trying to hit Andrew. Nevertheless, that's called transferred malice. My malice was directed against Andrew. I accidentally hit, hit Ben, but the mens rea is still there. I still have the guilty mind, as in I deliberately tried to hurt another human being. It doesn't matter that I hurt the one, the wrong one, the one I didn't actually wish to hurt. Nevertheless, I'm guilty of assault at the very least. So, um, uh, we talked. We talked about battery. This thing called indirect battery, which is a bit like transferred malice. That's as um, uh, as per the, the Department of Public Prosecutions against K or R against Martin. Um, and there's there's no there's no implied consent. This is usually battery. Um, assault is something which is defined by Turberville against Savage. Okay, so there are um, the Offences Against the Person Act, Section 23. Um, this is about um, all sorts of more serious harm. It can include to the internal organs, harming people's livers, liver and lungs and so on. People who are hospitalised, well, that's clearly serious harm. So bear that in mind if that comes up in a question. Um, so you also have to think about the, the chain of causation. Is, the, is there novice actus interveniens, as in a new event, something else, interrupts the chain of causation, um, which means that um, the uh, defendant is not responsible for what happens on later. It would have to be very bad what happens in between um, to break the chain of causation. So it's quite difficult. Um, uh, okay, so um, remember, we the Offence Against the Person Act can go right up to, to murder or manslaughter. And what's the mens rea for, for murder? That is to intentionally or recklessly um, killing someone um, or at the very least intending to cause them grievously bodily harm, but if it wishing to, or being reckless about causing grievous bodily harm, ends up actually killing them, it nevertheless it's, it's usually still murder. So um, uh, they're, they're, um, the issue of consent doesn't really operate here, even if somebody wants to be killed, requests to be killed, and is absolutely certain, even if it's sworn in front of a dozen witnesses, 
um, it doesn't matter. You can't be killed with with your consent. So this is this, here the principle um, uh, volenti non fit in uria does not operate. Um, uh, there are times when pe people have supplied drugs, for example, someone says, yes, I want that drug, and takes in a legal drug and dies from it. Nonetheless, the person who supplied the drug is, is still guilty of a crime, not murder, actually, giving someone uh, the, uh, this, this uh, pill which happens to kill them, but it's still a grave crime. Um, okay, remember, um, you can usually only commit these, these, these acts by commission, sometimes you commit by omissions. There are duties to act. Usually, you know, as a parent, as a doctor, as a nurse, as a police officer, as a teacher, as those who those are responsible for others, you, you have a duty to intervene and save people where you can. Whereas the, the, these, there's no mutuality here. A child, including a grown up child, has no such duty towards his mother or father. Um, OK, so uh, the, the in, in R against Marcus, it talks about um, uh, nox, noxious substances and how those can cause harm. Um, so even if these are, are legal things, supplying alcohol, even to, to a minor or someone you know is, is already very inebriated or in a dangerous situation. So um, remember for murder, you need the actus reus and the mens rea to coincide. Um, and there can be several steps which actually add up to murder. It can be poisoning someone in increments, not one big dose of poison that kills them one night, but it can be cumulative over a long period of time. Nonetheless, that could be murder. Um, OK, so... Um, People often try to try to cover up these crimes. Their case about that are against church and are against Lebrun. Um, so, um, or, or someone, there was a case where someone murdered someone else, tried to kill someone, thought the person was dead, actually the person wasn't dead, in an effort to dispose of the body, threw the body in the river, then the person drowned. Or was that murder? The defence obviously arguing, well, he didn't think he was killing the person, throwing him in the river, nevertheless it was held to be murder. Um, okay, it's a bit like R against uh, Marciella. So um, anyway, in Ara and, 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 and Bollum, uh, I think it's Bollum or is it Bollum, the court says they have to look at the situation in the round, the totality of the wounds, as per section 20 or section 18 of the Offences Against the Person Act. Um, so uh, sometimes their injury is caused by trying to run away from the wrongdoer. There's fright and flight. and But, but if this harm that's caused by running away from, from an assailant leads the, the, the victim to fall over and hurt himself, um, if that's foreseeable, then the, the defendant is still guilty, even if the defendant didn't actually manage to hit or kick the person. Um, however, is it unforeseeable? Because what the, the, the victim did to try and escape the danger was so ridiculous that no reasonable person would have, uh, would have anticipated it, in which case the defendant would be not guilty. There are cases which ask these questions, such as R against Roberts, and R against Williams and Davies. When I say R, I mean like Regina, the crown. Re Re Regina or um, uh, or Regina, how we wish to pronounce it. Regina being Latin for the queen. Obviously, if there's a king on the throne, it's Rex, as in the king. Okay. So, battery as per section 47, the Offensive Against the Person Act. That's something we, we, we you see all the time. Um, and it can even be psychological, as decided by R against um, Chan Fook causing people to, to, to weep incessantly. Um, uh, okay, but causation is always a key issue. So grievous bodily harm, it can be, be a psychological injury, um, as asserted in um, uh, uh, R against Ireland. The, the, the person of the country can be a surname, not George from Ireland, incidentally. Um, but it has to be a named psychological condition that's, that's caused or, or at least aggravated. It can't but just do be something which is uh, very uh, non-specific, like sadness or worry. Um, now, if you fail to carry out some safety checks you're not supposed to, this can also be uh, breaking the offence against the state, the state, the offence against the Person Act, as in R against Put, uh, Pitwood. Okay, a contract, for example, can, can give you a duty to act. You can sign one of those if you work in certain roles. So causation is probably the trickiest thing of the offence against the Person Act. There's the eggshell skull rule, as in R against Haywood. You take your victim as you find him. You injure somebody and not realise that person is particularly susceptible to this injury and suffers grievously, much worse than you would have anticipated. Um, nonetheless, that is so what? That's your fault. If you stab someone in, like in the foot, you think it's never gonna, not going to kill the person. The person turns out to be a hemophiliac, bleeds to death. Well, you're still guilty um, of, of murder. Okay, so the mens rea 
under Section 20 of the Offence Against the Person Act is, is seeking to cause harm, or at least being reckless about doing it. Um, and this is R against G, for example, um, and that, that, that you can be guilty under, under the Offence Against the Person Act by, by an omission if you didn't um, show due diligence if you're in charge of someone's safety. You've got to do what's reasonable. So a grievous bodily harm in Section 18 and Section 20 of the Defence Against the Person Act is something that comes up again and again. We often ask, was there an intention to cause grievous bodily harm? Well, what do you need to discuss here? Was there a direct intention or an oblique intention, as in R against Woolen? And was serious harm very likely to result, in which case it was definitely GBH? If it was very unlikely to result, then, OK, not GBH, that might reduce it to battery or even assault. Um, OK, remember here um, the application of force is something we're looking for, and that's tricky. So you've always got to take the law and put it onto the facts and then see what you come out with. Um, OK, so that's just a little bit of a few case studies of, of how to analyse um, crimes which uh, seem to be against the Offences Against the Person Act. Toodaloo.